You know, sometimes I think it's given the good lord the worst of it to say he invented people. Howdy y'all, The Murdoch here, and we're back in this Western Wednesday video with a review of the 1956 film Jubal from director Delmer Daves. And if you recall from my review of 310 to Yuma, which is probably his best known film, I'm a pretty big fan of his work. As a filmmaker, Delmer's style really resonates with me. He might not come up in a conversation about my top 10 favorite directors of all time, but when I really think about it, I really, really enjoy his style. And a lot of that has to do with its, its simplicity. It's you know, very boiled down, he doesn't have a lot of themes, generally picking one central theme and he sticks with that throughout the course of the film. But it's really his use of suspense, and vulnerability in the case of the characters that really makes that theme pop. Jubal is the story of Jubal Troop, as played by Glenn Ford, a cowhand who's been drifting through life, running from his past without a home or steady work. He's picked up by Shep Horgan, as played by Ernest Borgnine, who's looking for a trustworthy man to take on the role of ranch foreman. In spite of all the harassment from Pinky, the current top man at the ranch, as played by Rod Steiger, who plays the role with a lot of disdain towards Glenn Ford's character, Jubal decides to stick around, and through his hard work, he certainly earns the trust and respect of Shep. But unfortunately, he also earns the eyes of his wife, May, as played by the beautiful Valerie French. Although this film does have some action and adventure, at the heart of it, this western is a drama, which in the end really does play into the strengths of Delmer as a storyteller. The relationships between the characters are believable and handled quite well, and the characters themselves are three-dimensional, even tortured at times, in particular in the character of Shep, as played by Borgnine, when he suspects an affair between Jubal and his wife May. He goes from being a fun-loving, salt-of-the-earth rancher to a near-manic madman who's willing to use violence to get revenge for his perceived betrayal. Ford happens to own one of my favorite Western performances from his character Ben Wade from the classic 310 to Yuma. In Jubal, Jubal Troop is pretty much your typical Western hero, noble on the surface. However, beneath the surface, he's vulnerable and sad, afraid and tortured, and when he reveals this, it adds a lot of depth to his character, and it's really powerful. All the supporting actors do an incredible job in this film, and they're all completely believable. Even when they occasionally do or say things that aren't entirely natural, which might reflect a slight flaw in the script, or something along those lines, I still tend to believe them, and I really enjoy watching them, even the ones that have a tendency to piss me off. And I think that's a really good reflection on Delmer as a filmmaker. He really knows how to get good performances from actors and really illustrate the power between those relationships on screen. Delmer is a great storyteller, knowing how to use his camera and his setting to tell a wonderfully complex drama. This film, set in Wyoming, uses a lot of big, pulled-away, wide-angle shots. And those shots would seem to reflect a lot of the isolation found amongst several of the characters. And it's easy to focus on Delmer's character work and sort of miss the way he uses those shots to reflect those emotions. I feel like it's just masterfully done. Most of the little flaws with this film, I'm pretty much willing to let go, but unfortunately, I do have a bigger flaw with the end of the film, which does end up compromising my enjoyment somewhat. And it's really in the way some of the tragedies handled towards the end. It almost feels like it ends up just getting glossed over. It's all believable up until pretty much the final segments. And then sad things happen, bad things happen, and then they kind of just quickly get over it and sort of tack on a somewhat artificial happy ending. It's not entirely happy, but it certainly feels much more happy than what would have been true to the story. It sort of seems like they just had to give it a little bit of a happy ending because they felt like they had to give it a little bit of a happy ending. And it just doesn't feel natural to me. And it, it kind of compromises the overall integrity and the power of the rest of the story. I still think the film is pretty good though, and I definitely recommend checking it out. Unfortunately though, the ending is a little bit meh. But it kind of is what it is. It is worth watching for the relationships, though, so I definitely recommend checking it out. Well, that's pretty much going to do it for this one. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and give it a like. If you'd like to see more Western reviews and stuff like that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. As I always say, it makes me feel like I accomplished something. But otherwise, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye.